hello again, he and COVID in A10, and uh, now we're getting into an interesting unit, the Great Depression. I'm sad. Already? I'm sad. Uh, well, this is this is interesting because when you, uh, when people look back and at these at the people from this generation, they refer to them as the greatest generation for for every reason possible. You know, a, an economic disaster, um, and then <clears throat> after an economic disaster, you know, you have a world war. Um, these people. My grandparents, probably your grandparents. Um, I, I guess you could see, you've seen growing up how that changes your behavior, um, how you appreciate little things, yep. how you don't waste certain things, how... You know, my grandfather was born in 1904 okay. in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so he was a teenager right. for the Spanish flu. You know, 15 years old when that hits. Right. He's 15 to 25 during the Roaring Twenties. Great time to be alive. Right. Really you know, cool. then the prime of his life, you know, working. Luckily, the depression didn't hit him and, the, and my grandparent, my grandmother, and my aunts and uncles. But, um, you know, 25 to 35, the Great Depression. That's crazy. 35, World War One, World War Two. I mean, it's just like, what a life. What a life. I, kinda, I really wish he was around now that I'm really into soul studies and history to, like, talk it to him. And, and that's kind of interesting, too, because then you have those same people like my grandfather who, who went off and fought about fought World War II. Yeah. They don't talk about this stuff. Nope. You really, you gotta really like get it out of them. Yep. But, you know, my, when I was sitting at my grandparents dinner table and they wouldn't let me leave until everything was done off that, that plate, it does explain a lot. Yes, it does. You don't realize that until you get older. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk about today how we wind up getting to that economic depression. So there are a lot of different causes of the depression that uh, historians will go back and forth on. You know, it had to do with the farm prices, high tariffs. Don't worry, we will simplify that before you get done here. Um, you know, the election of a president, overproduction. We're going to focus on the uh, the major ones, yes. and I'll help you remember it for a test. But um, some early signs of economic trouble. You know, again, when we look at World War One and we're looking at that economic cycle, the United States was doing well economically speaking during World War One. We had to make wartime goods. Um, farmers were also doing well, but then, of course, after a war, you know, there was a little bit of an economic slump during that little bit of a recession, and then it winds up going back up into the 20s when they stopped making those wartime goods and they stopped making more and more consumer goods. And farmers really didn't get to feel the Roaring Twenties much. <clears throat> no, they, they were never really recovered, <clears throat> excuse me, from the post-World War I slump. Right. You know, part of that ties into the fact that people who planted their victory gardens were like, hey, this is kind of fun. fun. Let's continue you know, to do let's this. Continue. Now that might, <clears throat> excuse me, that might not sound like that big of a deal, right? but there, that, that was part of the underlying issues of why the farmers never really experienced the true effect of the Roaring Twenties. People became a little bit more self-sufficient with mm -hmm. that, you know, yep. you grow, you know, you don't have to buy as many tomatoes or mm -hmm. uh, whatever else you were planting in your victory garden. So the prices for farm, for farm products dropped and farmers uh, incomes fell as well. So when the demand was uh, much higher during World War One for these crops and these product, uh, these crops uh, that also increased the uh, the price of them as well. So during the twenties, it fell. Um, and when we look at when you're talking about debt, um, you had farmers that were taking out loans for their homes, their farms, their land, their seed, farm equipment, you name it. Um, they had trouble paying off those loans, and a lot of those loans they were taking from the bank. Right, like you got a boom. Right. During World oh, all right, I got an acre of land. I'm making a lot of money. Let me borrow money from the bank to get two acres of land. Because I'm going to be able to pay it back. Exactly. But then as the signs of the, their early troubles, they're not selling as much. Now it's like, uh oh, I'm not producing as much. People aren't buying as much. My $2 tomato is now $1 tomato. I'm starting to have trouble paying off my loans. So industries such as textiles and coal mining, they, they become depressed through the 20s. So when we look at the roaring 20s, um, and that's something else that historians, that historians will bring up. It's like, yeah, I think things were going well, but the impact that it had on certain people's uh, wallets or their financial status, um, it wasn't as large as you would think yep. when you're hearing like the roaring 20s and how everybody's doing well. And, you know, particularly when we're looking at coal miners starting to suffer, farmers weren't doing that well, and uh, the textile industries weren't doing it well as also. And you can almost go back to the roaring 20s and compare it to the gilded age, and just the term gilded, yep. that it was beautiful on the outside, but all those underlying issues of really what was going on is what's gonna cause the depression to take place anyway. All right, and a lot of that is the, you know, I, I almost think there's, there's, of course I'm thinking credit spending here as well when mm -hmm. you're looking at gilded, but you know, again, when, when you're looking at somebody 
uh, who was wearing, I don't know, a $15,000 watch. You know, there's, there's two things that come to your mind. Either he's really good with money or they're really bad with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there, there's, there's, of course, giving that off as well. Um, if that made it, did that? that it does. It, it did? It does. All right, because this coffee is, hasn't made its way to the no, top floor sense. yet. So we're getting to the causes. You know, overproduction. Um, factories and farms produced a vast amount of goods, which is going to impact the price of it. Um, I like to think about baseball cards here. You know, I was a big collector of baseball cards growing up, and when you're getting into the 80s, yeah, I said the 80s, during the 80s, they made a lot of baseball cards. So right now, those cards that I thought would be worth a lot, because time has gone by, they're not worth as much. Why? Because there's so many of them. Um, this can also get to, you know, for example, the holidays, you know, when you're looking at mm -hmm. uh, PlayStations and whatnot, you know, you don't, they don't make as much of them in the beginning. So what happens to the price kind of goes up. Yeah. Um, since things were overproduced here, what's going to happen is the price for those things are going to fall. Yeah. It the, the, goes back to simple supply and demand. Yep. goes to uh, surplus, you know, economic words when you guys get to economics in 12th grade. Right. You know, when you, whatever it is, if, if your warehouse is full, your factory no longer needs to produce. Your factory no longer needs to produce. Your company starts laying off workers. You know, and that 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 in lies that whole economic cycle we went to before. Sure. We're at the top of a boom. Right. It's getting ready to slide. I think I had another point to make with that. Nope, I didn't. All right. So wages didn't keep up with prices. Uh, workers could not afford to uh, buy many of the goods. So a, a lot of their wages, again, wages. When we're looking at wages, we're talking about your salary, what you're making. So each year, as the years went on, their salaries were not going up, as you would see today. Um, another thing, banks. Whew. This alone, in terms of banks, is a big discussion all in itself. Arguably the most important cause. Then, now, banks yeah. are always gonna be important. Um, when we're looking at what we use banks for, we put our money in the banks, but the thing is, is that if a bank was just holding your money to keep it safe, a bank would not be in business. There's, there are certain things that they have to keep going. They have to pay their workers. They have to pay their electric bill. They have to keep the lights on. And how do they do that? By giving out loans. Uh, you name it, you can get a loan from the bank as long as you're approved. You have today, you have an automobile loan, a home loan, which is a huge Credit one. Cards. Credit cards, student loans, whatever the case may be. Now, when you're looking at a bank, a bank needs to have that money to meet the needs of the depositors. We put our money in a bank. <clears throat> the bank makes the money work for them. Um, they'll lend, lend it out to people, people will pay it back, plus interest, and the bank will also invest that money as well, which is a big, big part of the And problem. what's happening with this weak banks is what starts to happen is, I go to Mr. He, he's a banker, I've got a great idea of a stock I wanna buy, right. but I don't have the money. So I borrow money from a bank to invest in the stock market. Now. Um, I, I can't really think of a good analogy for this. All right, it's like it's like buying lottery tickets on a credit card today. Or betting. It's betting, yeah. really. You know, because I don't know if I'm going to if that stock is going to do what I what I expect it to do. And in order to pay me back, that stock has right. to do well. So I'm buying the stock on credit. I'm, I don't have the cash on hand to pay for it. So if I'm borrowing ten thousand dollars from Mr. Heeg to buy ten thousand dollars worth of stock, and two days later that stock crashes, hint. Um, yeah. and now it's only worth $50, I still owe him $10,000. I might only have $50 in my pocket now, but I owe him $10,000. Now, who is doing that? Thousands, yes. not millions of people um, were, were borrowing in terms of, and this is where the banks are making really horrible loans. They're lending money to people to go and invest in the stock market. At one point in time, during the, you know, when the stock market was doing well during the 20s, okay, that's a safe loan. But the problem is, is that if that stock does not increase in value and those people are not making money on it, those people are not gonna be able to pay back the bank. Um, you put that on top of, you know, for example, farmers who may not be able to pay off their loans, well, now the amount of money or capital that the bank has is not as much as it once was. Um, so you had more than 5,000 banks uh, are gonna actually wind up closing. So when a bank closed, the positives are losing their money. And there's another thing that goes along th with this as well. You know, when we're looking at some early signs of trouble, you had people who felt, um, I got a tip from somebody saying that, you know, the banks are not that safe. So you had people start to withdraw their money from the bank. So if my buddy who has, I don't know, $70,000 in the bank and he has a hunch that, you know, maybe he should withdraw that money. 
well, he's smart because he has that much money. He must have done something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, you know what? I don't have 70 grand in the bank. I have like 20. I'm going to take mine out as well. And more and more people started to see that. And as more and more people were starting to withdraw or close their accounts, the banks did not have as much money to go around. Exactly what Mr. Heek said before. When you deposit money in the bank, it's not just sitting there. It's just go in a vault and just sit there. The bank is loaning your money out to other people. You know, and you go back to, the, if I, I don't know if you've seen the great movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. But there's a scene here yes. where, you know, the, the, the people come, they're like, we want our money. He's like, that's not how it works. Yeah. I don't have your money here. And then he's in this whole economic crisis and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's, I'm sure, like, you had a savings account growing up. And, and, like, I wasn't a bright child. And when I had this savings account, I thought inside of the bank, there was this beautiful little vault that had my name on it. And it had like sparkles on there and interlocking. And NY one day you could like dive and, into it like Scrooge McDuck. Like Scrooge McDuck. And I thought I had my own little personal bank in there. And the teller would put my my money in there, you know, my $5 little stacks. That's not it at all. The money goes in and then it goes back out. Um, that's what they use. They're using your money to kind of keep the wheels of industry or the economy going. Um, finally, what's going to wind up happening, you know, when it comes to all of these causes, um, some, quite often, students come to eighth grade and they go, "All right, well, the cause of the stock market, uh, the cause of the Great Depression, was the stock market crash." Yes and no. In the same way that the assassination of the Archduke was the cause of World War One. It's never just one right. thing. Uh, it's never just one. This thing. is the immediate spark. This is the event. Right. You know, if you're looking for an immediate cause or a spark, this is it. So this is when the stock market is actually going to mm -hmm. crash. Um, so you had a lot of investors who felt that this boom might end. They start selling their stocks. What's going to happen to the price of those stocks? It's going to go down. It's going to go down, and as more and more people are going to sell it, you know, those stocks are eventually going to be worth pretty much nothing. Um, with that rash selling of stocks, the they they start to uh, the stock. The, I'm sorry, the value of those stocks decrease, um, which is going to cause these corporations. Uh, it's going to put them in a situation where they cannot continue to operate. When it comes to the margin buying. Oh, jeez. This is what we said before. Yeah. So now it's like, you're you're not just borrowing money from a, a, a bank. You could just borrow money from a stockbroker. Right. You know, who's like, hey, I'm going to buy this on margin. I'm going to, it's really complicated how it this is. would act. You know, it's like, I'm going to buy $100 now, but I'm, I'm, I'm paying it back because I know this stock is going to go up. So it was, again, it's buying things on credit. You and know? When those, then when that stock value did not go up, they still owed and, and you know, the money that was went out, they didn't have it, so it was a con huge, huge problem. Yep. So this Black Tuesday, October 29th, 1929, this is when the stock market crashes. That's gonna really mark the beginning. You know what's it's really funny depression. about the stock market crashing? What's that? Do you know how many points it dropped? I don't know off the top of my head. It was like 75 points. Like today, the stock market is over 30,000. Yeah. Now, but back then, it was only at like 100. Right. So it dropped like in relative uh, perspective. It dropped a, a, a significant percentage. It was, you look at the actual amount of points it dropped, it was nothing. It was so. enough to do, it was just enough at that point. Yep. So how are you gonna remember the causes? Wow, weak banks, over productions, wages didn't keep up with prices, and the stock market crashed. This is just one way to kind of help you remember. Like Armenia of World War One. Right. Instead of Mania, you have wows. Wages didn't keep up with prices, overproduction, weak banks, stock market crash. That could be something that'll really help you on a, on a test, if this were to come up. You would think. You would think. You know, if I were a teacher, I might ask a question about what caused the Great Depression yep. on a test. Possibly. Here it is. We miss it. Oh, it disappeared. disappeared. Oh, there it is. Oh, I touched it. All right. We need anything else with this? No. All right, good. Thanks for watching. See ya.